Well, it sounds like a fruit delivery company, the Pineapple Express. But what it's delivering is a brutal storm to California, the worst in several years. A storm so strong, it's called a, quote, horizontal hurricane. Wow. And while that's happening on the West Coast, a nor'easter is hitting the east with heavy rain and snow. Caitlin Burke has the story. Two coasts, two storms. The storm that's hitting California is being caused by moisture that originated in Hawaii. It's being called the Pineapple Express, and it's moving down along the Pacific coast. It's said to be a fully loaded super soaker, and it's expected to unload more rain on California than the state's seen in more than five years. I'm getting some sandbags because after the hill behind me gets saturated, there's sheet flow across the hill. It comes to my garage and floods out the garage. Ahead of the storm, high surf eating away at this Washington shoreline, pulling these houses right into the Pacific. By the end of the week, 10-foot waves are expected in Southern California. Obviously, we're concerned mainly about the front of these homes that face the ocean. The heavy rain won't bring an end to the region's drought, but meteorologists say it will be a step in the right direction. Meanwhile, in the mountains, a blizzard warning is in effect. The Sierra Nevada is expected to get about three feet of snow. Forecasters warning that the winds there could be up to 80 miles per hour. Snow is what's plaguing parts of the Northeast as well. Upstate New York already seeing about 20 inches, and at least 15 accidents reported in Massachusetts where roads are covered in black ice. I couldn't stop the car, it was so icy. The Farmer's Almanac predicts below normal temperatures for about three fourths of the country. That means this cold weather that's hitting both coasts now could be the start of a long, cold, snowy winter. Caitlin Burke, CBN News. It's global warming, folks. It's the other side of global warming. You ask those climate people, and they'll tell you this is, well, if it doesn't get hot in global warming, it'll get very cold. You never know. Well, in other news, the violence may be escalating between Israelis and Palestinians in the holy city of Jerusalem as Benjamin Netanyahu is running for re-election. John Jessup has that story from our CBN News Bureau in Washington. Here's John. Pat, Israeli Army battalions and border police boosted their show of forces on the West Bank today. Chief of Staff Bandy Gantz called in the reinforcements after the death of a Palestinian official at a protest Wednesday. Palestinians claim his death is a war crime, but the autopsy team says it was a coronary blockage. As John Wagi explains, that hasn't quieted Palestinian anger. Doctors from Israel, Jordan, and the Palestinians ruled that a heart attack killed Ziad Abu Ain, a Palestinian cabinet minister who died during clashes with Israeli soldiers. Demonstrators say they were going to plant olive trees near an Israeli West Bank community when Israel used tear gas against them. Here, just before he dies, a clearly agitated Abu Ain says, they attack us. This is the occupation of terror. This is a terrorist army terrorizing the Palestinian people. Witnesses said soldiers beat Abu Ain, but in this video of the incident, it looks more like coronary distress. Abu Ain slumps to the ground with Israeli soldiers around him. Later, he is carried away. Palestinians want Israel to pay. It is a proof that Israel understands only the language of force and it should be taken immediately to the International Criminal Court for the war crimes they are committing against the Palestinian people. Perhaps not surprisingly, Abu Ain's portfolio included planning Palestinian demonstrations against Israel. The incident comes at a bad time for Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. On the same day, his chief political opponents formed a party alliance against him. And in one poll, the Labour Party is even ahead of his Likud party for the elections next March. An even more disturbing new poll affects all Israelis. 80% of Palestinians surveyed in the West Bank and Gaza say they support the recent increase in terror attacks in Jerusalem. Those attacks included the hacking and stabbing deaths of rabbis at prayer and a car plowing into a crowd at a train stop that killed an infant American Israeli girl. The poll also showed 86% of Palestinians believe Israel endangers the Al-Aqsa Mosque on the Temple Mount. And more than half would like to see a new Palestinian uprising or intifada. After Abu Ain's death, Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas threatened to stop security cooperation with Israel in the West Bank. 
Israel says that could make a bad situation even worse. The talk about increasing the violence doesn't help de-escalate the situation. I think we have to be responsible uh, uh, parties of what's going on in the ground um, and prevent that escalation from actually happening. Um, we are we are doing what we can in order to do so. It would be good if the Palestinians send that same message. Despite the medical conclusions about Abu Ayn's death, a message of confrontation is the one likely to resonate in the West Bank. John Wagi, CBN News, Jerusalem. Here at home, the land of the Bible is the subject of a new Hollywood blockbuster coming out tomorrow, a retelling of the story of Moses and the exodus from Egypt. Angela Zadipek attended the premiere of Exodus Gods and Kings, getting an inside look behind the scenes for today's edition of Family Entertainment News. From the Red Sea to the red carpet, I'm here in New York City for the premiere of the biblically inspired film, Exodus Gods and Kings. Something is coming that is far beyond my control, unless you set my people free. I am prepared to fight for eternity. Director Ridley Scott brings new life to the story of a man's daring courage to take on the might of an empire, setting 400,000 slaves free against the Egyptian pharaoh, Ramses. I personally believe that Moses is the most inspirational hero in probably human history. Do not be afraid! God is with us! The iconic 1956 film, The Ten Commandments, starred Charlton Heston as Moses, winning an Oscar and three other major movie awards. Christian Bale shares with us how he viewed taking on the role. He's the most intense um, uh, figure that I've ever portrayed in my life and the most beloved um, uh, 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 as well. Um, and, uh, and so, you know, you, you have to at some point take a leap of faith and recognize that you have to go with your own portrayal, but also you can never neglect the fact that people have such strong, incredibly strong opinions on how Moses uh, should be portrayed. With critics claiming the film Noah failed to relate to religious believers, producers say the coming movie will be an issue on which Christians, Jews, and Muslims can agree. Moses is the one figure that means something to the world's three major religions. You know, he's obviously critically important to the Jews, critically important to Christians, but Moses is also a Muslim prophet. Look, this is one of the truly great inspirational stories ever told. Now, our take on it, may be something that some people feel uh, good about, maybe some don't, but it's one of the greatest stories ever told. Moses, you say that you didn't cause all this. You say that your God did. I am the God! I am the God! He was somebody who was filled with um, self-doubt, but equally he was a, you know, a liberator, um, a leader, um, a, a man of incredible self-confidence, um, but also someone who at, at other times was very timid. You know, um, he, was, he, he kind of encompasses almost every human emotion uh, you can imagine, but um, in a very strong way. The film will release nationwide December 12th and will play throughout the Christmas season. I'm Angela Zadapek with CBN News, New York City. Thanks, Angela, and you can find more of her coverage of Exodus, Gods, and Kings on CBNNews.com. Well, it may not quite be a plague of biblical proportions, but superbugs could kill millions of people a year if action isn't taken to stop them now, according to a study commissioned by the Prime Minister of United, the United Kingdom, David Cameron. Superbugs are bacteria that have become resistant to drugs, and the report says they could kill 10 million people a year by 2050, more than the number who die from cancer now. Superbugs are already implicated in 700,000 deaths around the world each year, and they could cost the world economy $100 trillion between now and 2050. The analysis team from the United Kingdom is looking at ways to prevent the potential crisis. Pat, that's a troubling prediction. It scares the pants off of you. Are you kidding? Troubling prediction. I mean, that's <laughs> Understatement. hundreds of trillions of dollars and millions dying. Well, you know, the problem is, uh, doctors have been so uh, quick to use antibiotics. I remember years and years ago when we were living in New York um, and I had little children and uh, if one of our kids got a cold, went to the doctor, the doctor hit him immediately with a, with a, with a shot right. of uh, antibiotics. And, uh, Usually penicillin, right? Uh, penicillin, oh, everybody uh, misused penicillin and the deal was that uh, 
uh, it, it cured the cold. But what happened was that those bugs began to be resistant. They began to replicate each other. And not only that, we now are feeding our animals all kinds of uh, antibiotics to keep them from having uh, any kind of problems. And they get fatter, and they grow more meat, and they give more milk, or they give more eggs, or whatever they want. And uh, we eat that stuff, and those antibodies come into our system. And so whatever bugs we've got become resistant to these creatures. and. Uh, those people in England may be telling the truth. They're experts in it. I'm, I'm not. But it, it certainly is a frightening prospect. And if we don't stop what we're doing, that's especially loading up our poultry and our uh, uh, cattle with antibiotics, we're going to have this problem. And it is a major, major serious. Uh, uh, a worldwide health catastrophe. The good news is in some grocery stores now, you can get yeah. the milk or the meat that says no hormones added, no uh. antibiotics added. It costs a little bit more, of course. It always costs more to stay healthier. Well, let's do it. Yeah, let's right, do it. Let's, let's pay the price. Because it costs more to go to the doctor. We want you to stay right. healthy this holiday season and throughout the new year. That's why we've put together this free DVD as our gift to you. It's called Protect Your Health. It's full of expert advice on diet, exercise, and much more. We'll send it to you absolutely free of charge. Just call the number on your screen, or you can log on to CBN.com. A Christian-owned T-shirt company in Lexington, Kentucky, is appealing a ruling by the city's Human Rights Commission. The the decision said the business violated a city ordinance which forbids discrimination based on sexual orientation by refusing to print t-shirts for a gay rights festival. The company called Hands On Originals argues the ruling violates its freedom of religion and expression and that it should not be forced to communicate a message it finds morally objectionable. Schools in the capital of Germany have recognized World Humanist Day as a holiday, like All Saints Day and Yom Kippur. That means students in Berlin who believe in humanism can apply for a day off for the holiday, the same way as Christians, Jews, and Muslims do for their holy days. It is the first sanctioned holiday for humanists in any of Germany's 16 states, and apparently worldwide as well. World Humanist Day was conceived in 1986. It takes place the 21st of every June, often on the solstice. Remember, you can always get the latest from CBN News by going to our website. It's CBNNews.com.